Hi, and welcome to Uncle Scott's Kitchen. Today is part of our camping cooking series. We're gonna take an in-depth look at camp Dutch ovens. You know, many moons ago, I was a Boy Scout. Back in the day when Boy Scouts did things like go canoeing, go camping, learn how to tie knots. And I have great memories of going to Camp Mosquito Bite, excuse me, I mean Camp Jackson, where not only did I come home with 48 mosquito bites on my legs, my mom was shocked, coated me in calamine lotion, but they taught us how to make camp cobbler in a camp Dutch oven. So fast forward a few decades to this past weekend. The quarantines and shelter in place orders have lifted a little and I got to take my family camping down in Southern Utah. Now with a little help, my two year old son got to cook his first hot dog on a stick. And then just like I've been doing for decades, we made that exact same camp cobbler recipe in our camp Dutch oven. And really that's what this camping cooking series is all about. Enjoying cooking and good food with family and friends in the great outdoors and the gear you need to do that. Camp Dutch Ovens 101. So what exactly is a Camp Dutch Oven and how is it different from a normal kitchen model? Camp Dutch Ovens are simply Dutch ovens optimized for outdoor cooking. Either over a campfire, buried in coals, or most commonly these days using charcoal. They can also be used on an outdoor burner for deep frying. Let's compare and contrast these two lodge Dutch ovens, a kitchen model and a 12 inch six quart camp model to illustrate the differences. Both are made of cast iron. They're very heavy. This one is over 16 pounds. So when I say camp model, it's really for car camping or trailer camping or an outdoor kitchen. Definitely not for backpacking. That is, unless you stick it in your wife's backpack. The surface of the kitchen model is enameled, very durable, low maintenance surface. The camp model is bare cast iron, no coating, so it needs to be seasoned just like a cast iron skillet. The next thing to notice is the difference in lids. The kitchen models is rounded with a knob designed to be lifted with a mitt covered hand. The camp model's lid is different. It is flat and has a rim. This is so that you can place coals or charcoal directly on the Dutch oven itself and nothing will slide or roll off. As when you use a camp Dutch oven outdoors, you are fighting physics to some degree. But outdoors, as heat rises and quickly dissipates, it's relatively easy to get heat to the bottom of the Dutch oven, but for baking breads or cobblers or anything where you need the top of your food to brown, you've got to get the lid very hot. And you do this by placing coals directly on it so that it in turn heats the trapped air in the oven and cooks the top of your food. So the flat lid with rim is designed to hold all of those coals on there so you can get an oven effect inside. Now as the Camp Dutch oven lid will be covered with searing hot coals, you don't lift the lid with your hand, you need to use a lid lifter tool. Pro tip here, the most important skill to learn early on with a Camp Dutch oven is how to lift the lid. When you use a lid lifter tool, lift the lid directly straight up, keep it level, and if it's breezy, go immediately downwind. If you don't, the secret ingredient in your recipe is going to be charcoal ash. So you need to be really careful when you lift the lid that you don't dump charcoal into your food. Now back to the kitchen model. The kitchen model has helper handles on each side designed for mitt covered hands to lift it up. The camp model instead has a ring handle. This allows you to suspend the Dutch oven over a campfire or more commonly be used to position or carry the Dutch oven. The next big difference is in the bottoms. The kitchen models is smooth, designed for stove tops or sitting on oven grates. The camp models has legs. These are designed to support the Dutch oven above a heat source like charcoal, Without the legs, if you place the Dutch oven directly on charcoal or in a campfire, it would shift and your food would slosh around as the coals burned up. Now the legs also allow multiple Dutch ovens to be stacked one on top of the other. Pros might stack these six or so high so that the layer of charcoal on the lid of one Dutch oven in turn becomes the bottom layer of charcoal for the next and so on and so forth. Now I found with a two year old kid running around, a stacked tower of Dutch ovens with searing food and charcoal is a disaster waiting to happen. So horizontal cooking is fine with me. 
Now, occasionally you're gonna run into rainy weather when you're camping. One time in Alaska, there were swarms of mosquitoes so big they looked like hummingbirds. Occasionally, you're gonna to wanna to cook inside your trailer rather than outside. I found that if you finagle these things a little and have sturdy grates, you can use them on a burner, but they're really not optimized for that. Now, what size Dutch oven do you need? Now, these things come in various sizes. Common ones are 10, 12, and 14 inch models. They also come in deep and regular depths. The 14s are huge, the 10s are okay for one or two people, but the 12 is in a really nice sweet spot. I've also found that recipes and cookbooks usually tell you which size Dutch oven to use for each particular recipe, and it seems that there are many more recipes for the 12 inch regular depth model than any other. So I have the Lodge 12 inch here, regular depth. I also have a 10 inch deep dish model. Now I tend to like the deeper model for foods which are more liquid, like a soup or a chili or a stew, something where it's going to be boiling. They're not as good for baking because the deeper depth puts that lid farther up above your food. So if you try to bake in one of the deeper models, you got to use a lot more charcoal on top to get the top of your food done. So if you're looking to get started and get your first Camp Dutch oven, I think the easiest and most versatile choice is to get a Lodge 12 inch, six quart, regular depth model. Default loadout. For a good basic setup for car camping, for camper trailers, and on up from there, here's the minimum you need. A good Dutch oven, a chimney charcoal starter, tongs to move hot charcoals around, a lid lifter, and of course I like to bring along a rubber snake for my wife's sleeping bag. What? That's actually not funny. It's not. It's actually a little funny. Now if you want to level up, add heat resistant gloves, a lid stand. After all, where are you gonna set the lid once you're dipping your food? Also, I like to have a small Dutch oven stand, just so I can keep things level. In most developed campgrounds these days, sites have a grill stand or a level cement line fire pit, so you can probably get by without one of these. But if you're gonna do a lot of car camping or cooking out where there's not a developed campground, you'll definitely wanna have a small stand. And for one level higher, I've started using these pan liners. They cost between $1 and $2 each, and maybe a purist will have a perfect seasoning and not need to use these, but watch this. Here's the cleanup after some chili I made. Boom. Clean up in three seconds. Maybe cheating a little, but really convenient, especially if you're dry camping in a tent and don't have water hookups for your trailer. These really save some time and water. And just to be a true loon, I sometimes take a small level to make sure my stand is level and my food doesn't run to one side or the other, and maybe a whisk room to get rid of some of that charcoal ash on the lid. Now let's talk a little bit about heat regulation. The reason most people use charcoal with Camp Dutch ovens is that charcoal makes it relatively easy to regulate the amount of heat you cook with. Now recipes from most good cookbooks will tell you the number of charcoal briquettes to use for each particular recipe. Generally, there will be a two to one ratio of coals on top of the oven to coals underneath. For example, a recipe might call for 21 coals, seven underneath and 14 on the lid. Now I've found that these are guidelines much more than rules. For example, I've noticed that altitude significantly affects cooking time and heat. The cobbler we're about to make, I once made it in the high Uintas at over 10,000 feet, it took over an hour and 10 minutes and a second batch of coals to finish. Same recipe, a lovely Kodachrome basin at about 6,800 feet was done in about 45 minutes. So you really gotta keep an eye on it. Additionally, wind and ambient temperature are going to affect your cooking time as well. So a pro tip, early on, recipes for soups, stews, chili, Recipes where you can lift the lid and see how fast or slow the food is boiling and add or remove charcoal as necessary are great for developing experience and skills. So save intricate recipes. Save those for when you've developed some skills and leveled up a notch or two. How do you use a Camp Dutch oven start to finish? Camp Peach Cobbler. So let's put all this together and show how to cook something start to finish. 
we're going to make easy, classic, hopefully delicious camp cobbler. Now if the Pope, the Queen, or a really big celebrity like Charles Nelson Riley are coming over, I might make something a little more intricate. But this recipe is a great one to start with if you are new. Here's how to make it. First, set up your Dutch oven stand. Get it as level as possible. Fill your charcoal chimney and light your charcoal and get it going. Place a foil liner in your Dutch oven. I'm using a 12 inch, six quart Lodge Dutch oven here. Open two 30 ounce cans of peaches and heavy syrup. Pour those in. Over the top of the peaches, add one dry yellow cake mix. Spread it relatively uniformly. Cut up one stick of butter and place the pieces all around the top. Then shake on some cinnamon to taste. I actually like to use a cinnamon sugar blend. Put on the lid. When your charcoal is ready, use tongs or shake out nine or 10 briquettes onto your stand. Add 16 to 20 briquettes to the lid. And again, you're gonna to wanna to adjust these for wind, for altitude, for ambient temperature. So just keep an eye on it. Then after about 20 minutes or so, I like to check it. Just make sure it's not cooking too slow or too fast. I adjust the amount of charcoal as necessary. Rotate the lid just in case there's any hot spots. This will help mitigate those. And check it again at regular intervals. It's done when the top is done to your liking. And how did this Camp Dutch Oven Peach Cobbler turn out after that hot dog on a stick? Is it good? Yeah. And really that's what this camping cooking series is all about. Good food with your family and friends and the great outdoors. In this episode, we went through Camp Dutch Ovens. I really like these cast iron lodge models. I give those a thumbs up. There are many others though. I highly encourage you to get one. Get out there when these quarantines and shelters in place are over. Get out in the fresh air. Make some good memories. If you get a good quality unit, take care of it. You'll hand it down to your grandkids someday and have decades of memories to share. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Here's a link to the next one in our camping cooking series. Please subscribe if you get a chance. Post your questions and comments below. And we'll see you next time on Uncle Scott's Kitchen.